This clip is brought to you by Merrick Health, the premium telehealth network from Derek Moore Plates More Dates. Get your blood work and hormone optimization done under the same roof. Enjoy this clip. How do we get ourselves just out of this? Like, uh, it seems like there's like a health crisis going on. It seems like people are very sick. Obesity is still on the rise, even though we oh, sit here man. and talk about fitness all day long. Yeah. Um, do you have any ideas or, you know, have you thought about this a lot? Like in terms of, do you think it would be good to get into our education system or like, what do you think are things that would be helpful? I mean, I think education is key. I also, I'm not opposed to like putting warning signs on junk food, mm -hmm. like the way they do with cigarettes in the UK or in, in the EU, they put like, literally you can see like a diseased lung, like on a pack of cigarettes. And it's, I mean, it does a pretty good job. Yeah. I like telling you what the consequences are of consistent cigarette smoking. You know? I think they've also taxed um, sugar, mm -hmm. like they've taxed, you know, certain drinks and things like that Yeah, in other countries. Yeah. I mean, I'm all about like letting people decide for themselves. What people, what most people don't have is the information that allows them to make uh, an informed decision, right? Like I think that if most people knew that fruit juice was literally just <laughs> sugar water, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> this guy gained He's, like 12 pounds. <laughs> what, having, yeah, having like, uh, like, I don't know, pineapple juice or something. Just having gallons of <laughs> juice. And we wish we could say like, oh yeah, this was like 10 years ago when he wasn't as aware. But no, this shit was like 10 days ago. Listen, no. <laughs> listen, don't lose your train of thought, please. Don't lose your train of thought. <laughs> what happened? We always talk about not drinking your fucking calories. This is like the fifth time I've told this damn story. But... <laughs> like three weeks ago, I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Fuck it. Let me see what happens if I just start drinking a little juice, you know, just like have a cup mm -hmm. here and there. Because it was so good, I couldn't just <laughs> I couldn't just keep it to a cup on certain days. And after a week, because I overconsumed the juice because it was so good, yeah. um, I gained like twelve pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was muscle though. Could have been muscle. Dog, no. I haven't been two hundred and fifty eight pounds since like in years. No, I haven't touched that weight. And I was like, you know what? I see why we don't drink juice because we're not adult enough to have small portions. Small portions. It is delicious. <laughs> it is so it delicious. Is. Mm. Favorite juice, pineapple juice? Um, actually, I, I, I had the Simply Lemonade ones, mm. but they have this Simply Watermelon, which was lower in calories. Don't make the jokes. It was lower in calories. So I decided to go with that one and it tasted lighter, but even so, I just overconsumed it because it was so fucking good. Yeah. That's why we tell you don't drink your calories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I love grapefruit juice is like, Ooh. yeah, grapefruit juice is the Wait, shit. So you, you, you handle, you, you drink some juice here and there? No, I mean, I, I don't because I, I don't bring it into my house, but occasionally, mm -hmm. you know, like occasionally post-workout, like I'll have oh, yeah. like, uh, but it's, it's pretty rare actually. Yeah. yeah I'm generally like, I, I would say the only time I'm really these days drinking my calories, so to speak, is like I put like the heavy cream in my coffee, which we've, we've talked mm -hmm. about. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll drink like a smoothie occasionally. I have like a you know, like a smoothie recipe that's like doing pretty well in, uh, in California. There's like this place called earth bar. You guys familiar with it? It's uh, if you live in California, there's there, there, there's a few in San Francisco, there's a bunch in LA, but I have a smoothie with them. It's like a, it's like one of the rare smoothies that doesn't have frozen banana in it. It's just like all low glycemic oh, wow. like blueberries and avocado <clears throat> and things like that. Vanilla whey protein. It's probably really good, huh? It's pretty good. good. It tastes like an oatmeal cookie. It's pretty good. Ooh. So I'm not, generally I'm not a big smoothie person, Ooh. but like if it's just like a berry based smoothie with some whey protein, yeah, I'm in. See, but that's pretty filling. It has some fiber in it. You got the you fiber, know? yeah. Yeah, but yeah. normal juice, you could just put that shit down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made you lose your train of thought. All right, you, back you to the, saving the world. Save, saving the world. Save the world. <laughs> America, anyway. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think like I'm a huge fan, like po podcasts like this, I think are, are a huge public service, you know? Like there's a lot of... Um, people on social media these days that are like, uh, you know, that, that love to hate on whether it's like, you know, diet book authors or, or po health podcasters, you know, I, I think that it's a great public service to have many different on ramps for people to get people interested in health and nutrition. Mm -hmm. Um, and to s spread this message of like emp empowering health, right? Because a lot of people think that healthcare is something that happens when you go to a doctor's office. That's sick care. Healthcare is what happens when you're when you're negotiating with yourself to get off the couch and head to the gym. When you're pushing your shopping cart, you know, through the supermarket. Like that's it's where something healthcare. we should be practicing and working on every day. Exactly. Like it's a lifestyle. And um, and I think that like it's amazing like having podcasts and like I, I have my own podcast that I where I tr I try to do this and and you, you, what you want to do ultimately is is lead audiences to like be able to 
to form their own questions and and lead their own inquiries and and um and investigate their own topics and things like that you know like that's that's something that i've aspired to be for people because you know again i didn't i didn't go through the traditional channels but i armed myself with information because i had a, a very you know important personal vested interest mm-hmm. in 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 gaining that information that was my mom right so for me it's it's really important to just like if if i could be anything to people it's like to be an example um, so that people then, you know, feel empowered to go out and do their own research and 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 ask their own questions and, and things like that. You know, not to ta- not necessarily to take everything that I say as gospel. Like, that's not my mo. My mo is really just to like be able to arm people with information, and then if they want to take, you know, if what I've shared with them, and then you know, vet that or you know, integrate it and see how that affects them, and then tinker um, and iterate. To me, that's I think like. You know, that's, that's like a job well done. But yeah, I think ultimately like arming people with information so that it's informed consent. Like, you know, I think most people like, um, you know, when they open up, for example, like whether it's like the bottle of watermelon juice, watermelon juice or, uh, or the pint of ice cream. Right. And like they, they intend on only having like a spoonful and Mm -hmm. before they know it, they're looking at the bottom of the pint. Right. Mm -hmm. It's most people That's don't us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> every time. It's mm-hmm. just that most people don't realize that like those foods are designed to be overconsumed. So it's not a moral failure. Like mm-hmm. you like mm-hmm. it's not a moral failure if like you can't moderate your consumption of foods that are literally designed not to be consumed moderately, <laughs> yeah. right? It's not a moral failure. It's like you did exactly what you were supposed to do uh-huh. in that instance. So for people to kind of like to to have that information to know how food affects their behavior, I think that's like the one of the major I think obstacles. Like if we can if we can overcome that and get this information out to more people, then more people will be inclined to act on that knowledge. And a lot of times people will say, I'm just not that guy. I can't I can't do that. I can't be like you. I can't and I think what sometimes people are maybe um not paying attention to is it's like who struggles with these foods? Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much everybody has an issue with these foods. Pretty much everybody has an issue with social media. To some extent, it's made to be addicting. It's made for you to be on there for too long. And it's easy to point to like our children and kids and be like, oh my God, all these kids are on TikTok and they're all this stuff for way too long. But meanwhile, we're like, oh no, 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 let me just finish this one last email. This is work related. Like what I'm doing is super important. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not, uh, I'm not messing around the, the way that you are, but I think we just lose sight of the fact that so many of these things are very, very difficult and we need to set up rules and parameters around us. So I agree that there's definitely has to be like education, but there has to be like a practical education so people can apply it. And then I also agree that it's helpful to have uh, Dr. Baker. It's helpful to have a Paul Saladino. It's helpful to have Elaine Norton. And you got these people in all these different fields. So people can be like, ah, I don't really vibe with that guy, but that, that makes sense. I think I can do some of that. Oh, that guy's recommending some 10 minute walks. I can, I can at least figure that. I don't know about the diet thing, but I can at least figure out to go on some walks. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like, and I, I like the evidence-based folks, like I learn from them all the time as much as they, you know, not all of them, but a small minority of them like love to come after me. They tend to have a, a vegan slant, you know, so they, they, they love to like, um, the fuck's wrong with these people. You're yeah. a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Dude, I don't know. I Vegans, don't know. we do love you. Sometimes you're just very mean to us. <laughs> yeah. That's all. Yeah. But I mean, but yeah, I, I learn from, I learn from everybody. Like I, 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 I particularly seek out those that have different opinions than my own. Mm. Um, so that I can look, you know, whether it's like looking into their sources or, or just challenging my own assumptions about about various things. I think that's crucially important. Yeah. Crucially important. Hey guys, if you like this clip, go ahead and comment down below and let us know what you liked about it. All right. Share this with a friend. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And also, we are on Reddit and Discord. All that's down below. All our sponsors and everyone that supports us, down below there too. So you can get whatever you like from us. All right. Peace.